We're on the uh, Spread A project, which is uh, located near Conklin, Alberta. This pipe is going to transport bitumen from uh, Port McMurray. Uh, we're supplying uh, the GTF 65 sleeve, and it's our global transmission sleeve. The, uh, th this coating we're using today is a Canusa system. It's a uh, shrink sleeve system. It uh, complements the HPCC coating, which is on the pipe right now. So we're using a front end crew. We, we preheat the pipe with torches. We have a front end prep crew that goes along and cleans up the, the, the actual welds themselves. Sandblast truck comes in behind that, sandblast the, uh, the weld and uh, to, to get a near white finish and uh, get the proper profile that we need as per specifications uh, to get on the pipe. After that uh, sandblasting, we have a, the first coil comes in, preheats the steel, brings it up to about a, a 50 degree C uh, temperature. After that, the paint crews move in, they apply the epoxy. After they move on, the next coil comes in and they force cure the epoxy out. And they bring that temperature up to about 100 C. And once they, they move on, the next group comes in, they, they, they uh, apply the sleeve, and then the next truck comes after that, they shrink it down, and then behind the shrinkers, we have the rollers. They come in, they roll the air up. Canusa's uh, support is incredible. And in that, uh, as far as the training end of it goes, uh, uh, Aaron has a wealth of knowledge. He uh, uh, makes sure that before he leaves that uh, what is going on in the pipe and that is is quality work. The, the advantages that I found with the, the dry system compared to the wet system is the using the, the, the two coils, uh, you're able to uh, maintain a lot more heat in the steel. It's not uh, superficial heat, but it's heat deep in the steel. As you move on your way, move your way down the uh, the mainline coating crew, and they get back to the rollers in the back end, it's easier to remove the air from the sleeve itself um, because of that residual heat. Right now, this is a good day. Um, when we were in temperatures up to about minus 40 C, it gets very challenging, very difficult for the workers. The equipment uh, definitely works slower, but uh, for the most part, uh, they are able to adapt and overcome all the environment. We're using a dry system for the winter work. Uh, we're using two coils. So we're, the, the epoxy initially is going on a colder surface. It's, it's still heated up to about 50 C, but it's still on a cooler surface. But then it's force cured in place before the actual sleeve goes on. You know, even though there is a, a perhaps you have an extra three operators for the extra coil running a dry system, the production has increased from the summer work. On a really good day, sunny day, the, the key is no snow. If we can go into full production, we're probably upwards of about 180 welds per day, covering maybe perhaps five kilometers of production. We're on the Wapasu uh, Pipeline Spread B for Enbridge. We've got about 550 welds left to do, and mainline will be done sleeving completely. There's approximately 3,760 welds on the job. It's gone really well. Uh, Canusa's field technical support has been outstanding. Uh, they've helped with the, uh, the training of the personnel and familiarizing us all with the uh, qualities of the, of the product. Uh, they've been a huge help and it's, it's gone well. They're a good crew, good bunch of people. You have your painters, you have your mixers in between, so the painters are always working. They just shrink them on, and then after the sleeves are going on, you have a set of rollers behind them rolling the air out. Then you have somebody like me coming behind and inspecting to make sure they've done it all. Uh, the coating systems 
they are just they're labor intensive to do the thing properly. You know, we're going to sandblast. We have to have epoxy mixers, epoxy applicators, people heating, uh, people rolling out this sort of thing. So it's it's a, a substantial crew, and and that's only because the owning companies recognize the the importance of of the finished product. Uh, but oh, certainly production is a huge factor. But it's it's uh, the quality is in no way secondary. Quality is the first job. The production comes with it, with time. When I took on this crew last summer, uh, we were using uh, a wet cure uh, system whereby the epoxy was applied, uh, then the sleeve was applied over it, and uh, the epoxy cured as the sleeve uh, was heated and, and shrank on. Um, it worked away. There were some complications, potential for contamination. I felt there was a potential to uh, compromise the uh, the thickness of the uh, of the epoxy. So what we've gone to now is a forced cure, where uh, we preheat the pipe, um, apply the epoxy, heat the epoxy uh, with an induction coil, and cure it. Harden it up. Then we apply the sleeve, and. Uh, the forced cure has helped with the sleeve shrinking and the rolling out and the other issues because we're retaining heat. We have a reservoir of heat in the seal for the rest of the process. Um, I much prefer it. It's easier to work with uh, and I think we end up with a better product. The repair rate, I keep track of that. So far we're sitting at 0.8% for the entire line. And if we're at 0.8, we're not even at a percent. And we've done, we're almost over 3,000 miles. So that's, a, that's just outstanding. We experienced uh, an increase in production going with the, the dry cure, with the forced cure. The places that uh, we managed to speed up were on the back end. Uh, there was this residual heat that was in there for, for rolling out. There's no doubt in my mind that the, the forced cure is uh, it's a superior way, way of applying the product uh, to a large degree because it eliminates a lot of potential contamination issues. As long as the crew's been trained, it's outstanding and everything keeps rolling along. These, the numbers that we're getting now are phenomenal. Like they are, between both crews, they are averaging six kilometers a day. And that's pretty good for this type of application. I don't know if Ditch is gonna like that. They're about, uh, I think when we checked this morning, they're close to 40 clicks behind us. So if Murphy come along and blew up a couple of our blast, or compressor units on us, we could be down for a week and we'd still be ahead of Ditch, so it's been good that way. Not good for Ditch, but it's been good for us. When we were running the wet system in the summertime, this is summer heats, we were roughly two weeks to two and a half weeks behind Mike Gang. And Ditch and Lauren M were waiting on us. Enbridge wants the best sleeve system apply to their pipeline so they don't have to come back and fix it down the road. So that's the ultimate goal here today.